At around 11.25 a.m. on the 28th of April, 1995, a group of students from the Taiputini Polytechnic at Greymouth in New Zealand crowded onto a viewing platform high above Cave Creek in the Paparoa National Park on South Island. The viewing platform collapsed, sending the entire group tumbling into the chasm below. The vast majority did not survive the fall. Paparoa is a New Zealand national park famous for its forest and unique rock formations. Cave Creek, one of its most popular sites, is a small stream which emerges from a cave system at the bottom of a four-storey deep chasm. The viewing platform, erected in 1994, enabled visitors to venture out over that chasm and look down at the emerging stream below. A large group of students from the outdoor recreation course at the nearby Taiputini Polytechnic visited the park that day, but split into two groups early on. The first group, comprised of 17 students along with a Department of Conservation officer as a guide, approached the platform and ventured out onto it. Survivors recall marvelling at how flimsy the platform felt. Despite this, they trusted that it had been constructed safely and evaluated by a qualified engineer. They were wrong. The platform was a death trap. With all 18 people from the group on it, the platform collapsed, tumbling down into the chasm below. The victims fell 30 metres, almost 100 foot, before landing on jagged rocks. The second group, from whom the first had split off not long before, arrived at the location shortly after the collapse. A Department of Conservation officer from that group, along with one student, ran back along the trail to fetch help. Upon reaching their vehicles, however, they discovered that they did not have the keys. The student ran on foot to a nearby house to call the police. The first police officer took two hours to arrive at the site of the incident on foot. Helicopters and rescue equipment soon followed. Four seriously injured students were extracted from the canyon. The remaining 14 people who had been standing on the platform when it collapsed had passed away. An inquiry into the disaster revealed that the platform had been improperly constructed and was bound to collapse at some point. Among the most egregious issues with it was the fact that it had not been designed or approved by a qualified engineer. Furthermore, the platform was not bolted into the rock on which it was built. Instead, nails had been used to secure it. Additionally, the steps to the platform were not attached properly. The platform had never been granted building consent, nor listed or inspected, and warning signs suggesting a maximum of five people on the platform at any one time had been ordered, but never installed. The root cause of all these issues, the inquiry found, was a systemic issue with the Department of Conservation. The organisation had been given an immense and difficult task, but had not been given the funding to accomplish it, leading to the cutting of corners and improper construction work. Following this determination, the Department of Conservation inspected more than 520 structures across its parks, and 65 were closed for repairs. Many were removed, and safety notices were added to others. $2.6 million in compensation was paid to the families of the victims, but there were no prosecutions, as the Department of Conservation was a national entity, and law at the time did not permit the Crown to prosecute itself. New Zealand laws have since been changed to ensure that even government departments can be held to account. A memorial plaque 
was unveiled in 1996, and in 1998 the track, closed to visitors after the accident, reopened. New stairs were installed, but the viewing platform, that poorly made structure that claimed so many lives, was never rebuilt.